Each part of the body has electromagnetic waves like this. Dr. Omura says that normal tissue and abnormal tissue each have their own electromagnetic waves and emit electromagnetic waves of different frequencies. When the skin near the abnormal area is stimulated, the information from the abnormal area is electronically sent through the nerves to the part of the brain called the pons, where it is relayed to the nucleus reticularis giganticellaris, which is located on both sides of the nucleus raphae magnus that exists in the center of the lower part of the pons, which sends negative feedback to the alpha motor neurons and relaxes the muscles. Electromagnetic resonance between two identical tissues can also relax muscles. Let's give an example. This is a prepared specimen of stomach cancer tissue on a slide. This is placed on Yusuke's arm. If Yusuke has stomach cancer or a precancerous condition, the O-ring will open. If he does not, it will not open. Let's try it. The O-ring will not open, so it shows that Yusuke does not have stomach cancer. Why does this happen? The O-ring will open if the patient has the same pathology in his body as that in a pathological specimen on a slide he's holding his hand. How does this work? This is quite complicated. Mm, the matter inside the stomach emits electromagnetic waves. If they are similar to the electromagnetic waves emitted by similar specimen tissue, that would be picked up by something like a resonance receptor, if such a thing existed. That sensor would work to restrain the muscles in the fingers and hence voluntary movement would also be restricted. Very little is known about this sensor, if it exists. That is how it could work. However, the actual mechanism is not yet completely understood. So, it would be explainable if there were a sensor able to detect the electromagnetic waves from within our bodies and compare them with the resonating waves from identical substances outside of the body. That's right. Put simply, it depends on whether the electromagnetic waves the stomach cancer tissue in the body emits and the ones the prepared specimen emits are the same. There is something like a resonance sensor in the human body which senses the identical frequencies. Is it possible that human beings can feel these electromagnetic waves subconsciously? We were shown an interesting experiment by Professor Tani at Meikai University. You have attached electrodes to the subject to read the brain waves. What sort of experiment are you conducting? It is an experiment to see whether the human body has the capacity to work as a sensor for electromagnetic waves. How will the experiment be conducted? I will shine a light of about 80 luxes on the thumb, then see if the brain senses it or not. Are you going to see whether the skin on the hand can sense weak light that the subject doesn't feel by detecting changes in the electroencephalogram? Yes, that's right. What are you doing now? I'm looking for a stimulus point. A stimulus point? A point to shine the light on? Our bodies have different resistances to electrical currents. There are parts difficult for the current to flow through and others where it flows through easily. The part of the thumb where the electrical current flows easily is found and that is where a weak light will be shone. First, the brain waves are measured when the light is off. The subject has her eyes closed so she does not know when it is switched on. Here, we shine 80 luxes of light on the thumb. Humans cannot feel any sensation including heat from this amount of light.
This experiment is done on 10 people, and the changes in their brain waves when the light is on and off are recorded. The data is recorded on this machinery. The collected data is analyzed by computer. The changes in voltage of each brain wave, such as the alpha wave or the beta wave, are read. The brain waves change according to the zone in the brain that is active, but they can roughly be grouped into four classifications. When we are moving around actively, beta waves are emitted. This is a graph showing the brain waves emitted from the front of the right side of the brain. The blue bars show no light stimulation and the pink show the amplitude of the EEG components during the weak light stimulation. If you compare the pink bars to the blue, it is clear that the voltage output of the brain waves increases during light stimulation of the hand. These are the results from the front of the left side of the brain. As can be seen, the voltage output increased here as well. There was a difference in the voltage output when the light was shone and when it was off. What does that show? I think, basically, that the body is reacting to the stimulation. The subject didn't notice it, but the human body can sense weak light like that. That's right. Even though light was shown on the finger, the subject didn't consciously think, oh, there's light shining on my finger. But that part of the thumb immediately senses it and sends that signal to the brain. Yes, that's right. Then we can conclude that there are light sensors in the body besides those in the eyes. Since the light beam is electromagnetic waves, the human body has sensors for these waves besides our eyes. There are still a lot of things we do not understand about our bodies, but the O-ring test is an important tool which helps us understand the role of electromagnetic waves in our bodies. Apart from being used as a method of diagnosis, the O-ring test can be used to tell which medicines would be effective in treating diseases and what the optimal dosage for each individual patient is. This person has chronic tympanitis, inflammation of the middle ear. I can say that the ear and also the area around the ear is impaired. The O-ring opens. This time we put this medicine in the patient's hand while she points to the infected ear. The O-ring is strengthened and no longer opens. That is to say, effective medicines increase the strength of the fingers forming the O-ring, overcoming the weakening influence of the pathological area. If we check other medicines, we can decide which medicine is the most suitable for this patient by noticing the relative strengthening of the weakest finger. Now this. The O-ring weakening reaction completely disappears the moment I put the effective antibiotic in the patient's hand while the rod is contacting her pathological area. Do you think the O-ring test has credibility? Yes, taking into account my experiences of the last 10 years, I think that it's gained considerable credibility. At first, I couldn't believe it myself, but since I started using the bi-digital O-ring test, the therapeutic results for my patients have become better by far, and I have learned a lot more. As a new method of diagnosis for the 21st century, the bi-digital O-ring test is attracting much attention in many parts of the world. Other than being used as a method of diagnosis and in the selection of effective medicines, the O-ring test is also showing unexpectedly promising results in the treatment of many intractable diseases with or without known causes. If it becomes widely accepted, it will probably cause a revolution in the medical world. It could help patients and those who provide medical services reduce their escalating medical costs and avoid the discomforts and side effects of high technology diagnostic and treatment procedures which would be used selectively when the non-invasive O-ring test indicates them to be necessary. We can look forward to the bi-digital O-ring test's wider use based on the results of scientific research at many hospitals and to its being taught in medical schools around the world.